Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. What we're going to talk about tonight is the Edge Router command line. And I would like you, I know the command line, it can be very intimidating. But learning just a little bit about the command line and then seeing the results from that can make you want to learn it even more. Because sometimes we can do things quicker and more efficiently in the command line than we can through the web UI and through the config tree. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to just spend a couple minutes and we're just going to go through and we're going to talk about how you can do things and and look at the different commands um, and I, let's just let's just immerse ourselves and we're going to do it on my router so you can watch this and if and if I mess up it's on me then you can take it and if you've got a, a router for your lab or whatever well here's you know just don't be afraid of the command line just jump in and you know just just kind of do it just check it out don't be afraid make a config backup you know if this is your you know your home production router make a config backup if you're afraid that you're going to you're going to torch something, but I mean, be open, you know, be open to learning and, and checking it out. That being said, let's hop on over to the router. Okay, so here we are. We are at the login prompt for uh, my edge router. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to log in. When you first log in, it's going to tell you the last time that you logged in and where you logged in from. All right, so if you ever get stuck at the command line, the very first thing you want to do, hit the question mark. That's going to give you some options right out of the gate. So, not to confuse you, but you need to know that the Edge Router is it's a Linux machine. So not only do you have the commands that are being presented to you here uh, in the uh, Edge OS framework, but you also have some... Linux commands that you can run. So if I do like an ls, it would show me what's in that directory. I can change directories and then I can see the directories. Um, now, I don't necessarily, I mean, you've seen us do, you know, mess around in the Linux subsystem, you know, when we do like the, the private internet access videos. But here, let's concentrate. First, let's hit the, the, um, the question mark and so it tells us what um, our possible completions are and I got to that I literally just hit the question mark so uh, we can add an object we can clear we can go into configure mode we can do a connect we can copy we can do all these things we can enter the initial setup um, we can do a ping. We can do a. Uh, we can do an IP version six ping. We can reboot. We can rename something. We can renew DHCP. We can restart a service. We can do a set. We can do a show. All these things can be done. The question mark will tell us what all can um, be done. So if you want to go into configure mode, you're going to type configure and now if we hit the question mark it shows us what some of our options are in configure mode now if you want to configure something it has to start with the word set edge os you start with set so it'd be set hit space then question mark so now we have these other things set what for example if i want to mess with something that's under the system part of the configuration. I would do set system. Now I can do a question mark and I can see what are my options under system. So I've got contract, core dump, config management, domain name, domain search, flow accounting, host name, IP, IP version 6, name server, all these different options. You can see these here. So this is where you can do like a, if we do a set system and we do offload. So we're always talking about offloading. So here we could do a set system offload. And if we wanted to offload IPsec, we could do that. Now we've run that command. Now we need to commit that command. So we are going to hit commit and hit enter. And now it's going to do like a sanity check. If there are no problems, it's going to go ahead and commit it. Now to save it so that it's, you know, if the router gets rebooted, you're going to hit save. And it's going to save it to config.boot. Do not enter 
config.boot manually. Go through this process of setting the um, setting the config. Now, if you want to um, play around with any of the commands and look at, the, I mean, literally that question mark. And if you don't want to type a whole command, here's something else you can do. So if I just wanted to type S and then I hit tab, it's going to show me what my other options are or what my commands are that begin with S. So if I do a set and then I hit tab, it auto completed and then I hit tab again and it showed me my options under set. These are just some basic things that you should learn uh, to get accustomed you know, to working in the command line. It's going to make it easier for you in the long run. So then if we, from here, if we just, uh, we could type exit, but I want to show you a command while we're looking at these. So, you know, we did a commit earlier, but there's actually this commit confirm. So what does commit confirm do? So I'm working on a router remotely and I'm making a change and, you know, maybe the change, I'm not 100% sure about it, right? So what you can do is by default, if we just do a uh, commit confirm, it's going to commit, but it's going to roll back the changes in 10 minutes if there's no confirm. So this is kind of like a fail safe, right? So if I type something wrong, I can use this commit confirm, you know, if I'm working remotely and if for some reason I lose the router, since I can't commit to it, in 10 minutes it's going to reboot, it's going to bring that config back, and we're going to be back online. This is so helpful, uh, and and you should, if you're working remotely, use this as much as possible when you're not sure how uh, your you know changes are going to affect the router. Now, you've probably got a pretty good idea, but commit confirm is an excellent way to save yourself. All right, so let's actually make some changes so we can see how this commit confirm uh, works. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we'll do set system, uh, we'll do offload IPsec disable. Now we're going to do a commit, uh, commit confirm, and commit confirm will automatically reboot in 10 minutes unless confirmed. So my session is now, um, is now up and I, I hit the uh, I hit the up arrow on there and it actually uh, canceled the uh, commit confirm so let's do this again so we'll do commit confirm now if we enter a number of minutes it'll do that but by default it is 10 so and you could I couldn't see this part on the screen down below so I hit commit confirm it says commit confirm will automatically reboot in 10 minutes and less confirmed proceed yes type confirm to stop reboot. So now if I'm happy with these changes and I don't need the router to reboot because I didn't lose connection to it, I'm going to type in confirm and now it is going to cancel the reboot. I'm going to hit save and now we are done there. All right, so we can see how the commit confirm works. Works great. We didn't lose access to the router, so we didn't need it to reboot. Life is good. So we're still in um, edit mode so we can still do a, a save we can also roll we can do a rollback so we can roll back to uh, different revisions if we have them of the configuration uh, I mean you can do all kinds of things so now that we are in the edit command we can also do um, what else can we do so you can show specific, you could show specific parts of the configuration now that we are in configure mode. So we could do show, um, show firewall. And it will show us just that part of the configuration instead of showing us all of the configuration. Now, if you have a router that you can play around with, by all means, get in there and just start hitting the, the you know, start hitting the question mark, start hitting the tab. You're not going to break it if it's not in production. And if it is in production, you can be very careful. You can, you know, just don't don't be afraid. The, the What holds us back is just that very first step. That's always the hardest thing. All right, so let's look at a, a few more commands here. 
before we before we wrap this up. So there I am, I'm with the question mark again. If I do the initial setup, if I hit that, it's gonna say, uh, you're trying to run initial setup on an already configured system. Please reset your configuration to the factory default and try again. So there is some logic built in there where we can't accidentally run that command. That's good. Uh, to be honest with you, that's the first time I've ever tried to run that through here. Uh, the debug command, if they ever tell you that uh, you need, you know, support ever tells you that you need to do debugging, there's a debug there. Looks like it does a lot of the routing protocols. The clear command, so you can clear all kinds of things here. I don't know what happens if we just hit clear. Incomplete, in, incomplete command. So if you don't type enough syntax to com complete a command, you will see that incom incomplete command. So here we could clear ARP. And see, it's not done. So it's probably going to ask us for an interface. Yep, so there it is, interface or an address. So I could clear it on uh, bridge 0 0.2. So I just cleared the ARP table on that, that interface, which is actually a VLAN. That's it. I mean, this, it, I know this seems it's very daunting and it's, it's very intimidating and it seems like it's a lot. And there, I mean, there is a lot of things that go on under the hood here. But, you know, get yourself an edge router. You can get one down at our Amazon links or you can buy one anywhere and get in here and practice with it. You know, get comfortable with it. And, you know, I learn a lot by screwing things up. You know, get in here, screw it up, break it, figure out how to fix it. You're going to learn a lot. So I think that's about what I want to show you for now. Just don't be, you know, super intimidated by the command line you know start learning it start being comfortable with it or if you never want to learn it you never want to touch it that's fine you can use the web ui but you're going to get a lot uh you're going to get a lot more feedback from the command line and it is not for everybody i mean i will say that it is not for everybody and for some people that config tree um, is going to be just fine. But if you're interested in, in kind of taking your experience with the edge router and even, you know, the edge switch doesn't run the exact same version of the software. So its syntax is different. But if you want to take your experience and your configuration kind of the next level, this is kind of, you know, once you're comfortable with that web UI, this is kind of like the next natural progression for that. So get into the uh, get into the command line, get comfortable with it, and you know, you might you might surprise yourself how easy it, it really is. All right, that's it for this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron, the Patreon link is down below. If you'd like to join us on Discord, our link is down there. Come on over and chat. If you need IT consulting, you can go to h5llc.com, fill out that contact form, and somebody will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you uh, have a request that we can't help you with, I promise you we'll get you to someone who can help you out. If you'd like to buy any of the gear you see here on the channel, we also have that Amazon link down below. Once again, I truly and honestly appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next video.